The Housing, Community, and Economic Development Committee will now come to order. You're welcome to have all the conversations you want. Please take them outside. You will have an opportunity to be heard. If you fill out a public comment card on any item or general public comment, we will bring you forward so you can speak. With that, we will start with item number one. Can the staff read it into the record? Sure. Um, Chairman Cardenas, would you like to take item number one and number two at the same time? CAO has prepared report for both. Please. Okay. Item number one, CRA and CAO report relative to authority to establish and implement the West Valley Region Business Assistance Program at, for an amount not to exceed $1.5 million and amend the East Valley Region Business Assistance Program matching fund requirement. Um, item number two is CRA and CAO report relative to authority to establish and implement the South LA Business Assistance Program within five South LA project areas for an amount for initial allocation of $775,000 and amend the East Valley Region Business Assistance Program to standardize loan security terms. Thank you. Is there any, I don't see any public comment cards on item number one and two. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak on items one and two? Seeing no one come forward and having no comment cards before us, item one and two, public comment is now closed. With that, uh, any comments from the members? No? Okay. So um, it'll be a recommendation that we approve the CAO's uh, recommendations on items one and two. Just point out that um, at the moment, since we don't have a quorum, these would go as communications from the chair. Correct. Communication from the chair. Thank you. We'll now go to item number three. Item number three, CRA report and CAO report relative to the establishment of an industrial incentive program consultant pool for energy audits and various feasibility assistance services and approval of technical clarification in the program's administrative guidelines. Okay. Anybody here to speak on item number three? I don't have any public comment cards on item number three before me. Okay. See no one come forward. No comment cards on item three. Public comment on item three is now closed. Uh, with that, it will be a recommendation of the chair uh, that we approve the CAO's recommendations. We now move to item number four. Item number four, CRA and CLA report relative to the award of 20 of contracts to 20 firms to provide as needed real estate appraisal services for a term of three years with two one-year options to extend for an amount not to exceed $950,000. Okay. Is there anybody here to speak on item number four? I do not have any public comment cards before me on item number four. Seeing no one come forward, uh, we now have a quorum. Uh, present with us is uh, Council Member Reyes. We're on item number four. And uh, we move that we approve the CAO's recommendations. Okay. That's on a three to zero vote. Okay. Thank you. So that item number four is approved, the CAO's recommendations. On items numbers one, two, and three, um, we we're going to move forward with recommendation of the chair, but now that we have a quorum, open up those items for a vote on items one, two, and three. And uh, the motion is that we approve the CAO's recommendations on items one, two, and three. Okay, without objection. Okay, such is the order. Yep. Okay, we are now on item number five. Item number five, CRA and CLA report relative to the award of contracts to six consultants. Um, to provide as needed real estate relocation services for a term of three years with two one-year options to extend for an amount not to exceed $950,000. Okay. Anybody here to speak on item number five? I do not have any public comment cards before me on item number five. Seeing no one come forward, public comment on item number five is now closed. Uh, we move to approve the CAO's recommendations. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Yes. I believe that would be the CLA report on okay. items four and uh, items five. Okay. On item five, we move the CLA's recommendations and item number four. Four. Okay. And item number four. Okay. Thank you. And we now move to item number six. Item number six, CRA and CLA report relative to the award of contracts to Overland Pacific and Cutler, Inc., Paragon Partners, and real estate consultants, consultants and services to provide as needed real estate property management services for a term of three years with two one-year options to extend for an amount not to exceed $850,000. Okay. 
I do not have any public comment cards before me on item number six. Anybody here to speak on item number six? See no one come forward. Item number six, public comment is now closed. Any questions or comments from the members? No? Okay. So with that, uh, we move to approve the CLA recommendations. Okay. That is, they are approved. Now we move to item number seven. Item number seven, motion Garcetti Carnes relative to an instruction to the LEHD and the CLA to provide an updated data on foreclosures in the city, the use of California Housing Finance Agency hardest hit housing funds to modify mortgages in default, an analysis on the amount of federal funds allocated towards mortgage modifications received by the city, and a request to the city attorney to provide data on the number of mortgage consumer fraud complaints and a report on developing litigation in response to banks and investment groups violating city foreclosure ordinances. Okay. Um, first, uh, let me open it up for public comment before we hear from staff. Uh, anybody here to speak on item number seven? I don't have any public comment cards on item number seven before me. Therefore, public comment on item number seven is now closed. Um, okay. Could we have the housing department staff come forward? Could you briefly uh, describe how you would uh, move forward with this uh, as the motion describes? Uh, yes, uh, good morning, Council Members. Rushmore Cervantes with the Housing Department. Uh, the motion before you is, uh, is a request for a, a various data to be collected for analysis. Uh, uh, these are information relative to various programs, particularly to Cal HFA, that have been uh, created, programs have created to address the foreclosure crisis. Uh, since the Department's been tracking particularly the foreclosure numbers since uh, January t 2007. Obviously, the numbers are significant, 45,000 uh, properties that have been foreclosed. And looking at the raw data through uh, September of this year, it looks as like the notices of default are up as well, so we could see uh, an increase in foreclosures moving forward thereafter. Uh, there's is this a domino effect from the notices of default onto the foreclosures. Uh, we're on track, at least at this point, through the th three quarters, it looks like we're on track to hit the uh, relative numbers we had in 2010, which was about, about 10,500 uh, properties foreclosed. So the numbers continue to be uh, relatively high. Uh, the, to address the foreclosure problem, there's been, the state has received $1.8 billion in various forms of programs to address the foreclosure crisis. That's, that's outside the neighborhood stabilization program was to address the back end, to address the foreclosures, the foreclosed properties, to acquire the uh, dilapidated properties, rehabilitate them, and sell them to low-end individuals. So the report that we're going to provide is to take a look at what the usage of the $1.8 billion has been in the state of California, but in particular the city of Los Angeles, to see if we've received our fair share and to see what's working what's not working. Uh, you know, we're working, we, we keep track of what's going on in Washington, D.C. as the Obama administration has come out with a new program to, and we'll, we'll wait to see what those guidelines look like and see how they'll, uh, they'll be unfolded to the local users. Part of the problem that the city as well as the nation has is these monies are out there. It's a matter of the banks engaging and participating in principal write downs and to what level they will be willing to participate and of course what is the true a number of foreclosures out there. We have notice default, but then there's foreclosure. When do they become available? When are they on the market? So uh, some of them are being withheld uh, for various reasons. So how do we address that matter? So it's it's, it's a, a local issue. It's a state issue. It's a federal issue. And how do we address that? So, you know, the, again, there's $1.8 billion been made available that we're trying to uh, work with. Uh, and actually, the city of Los Angeles has received a phenomenal amount uh, was going to be before council uh, next couple of weeks for an uh, innovative program made available through Cal HFA through the Treasury Department of $5 million so that we can aggressively target areas within the neighborhood stabilization programs that have, have been identified in the city that have been hardest hit by the foreclosure crisis. We also have the rent registry program where we're registering from inception about a year and a half now with rollover. We've got about 9,100 registries on that on that list as well. So it's either that or the, or the banks will be are required to register at the federal level so that we have a registry of all uh, foreclosed properties. And the, the purpose of that is to ensure that the banks are held responsible for maintaining those properties even if they are foreclosed. 
So the report that we're going to provide is going to be a lot of a lot of material, a lot of data. And then at that point, working with the CLA's office and working with this committee, is what do we do with that data? There's going to be a tremendous amount of information relative to the, the programs, the monies, usage, but what really what do we do with that information, and how do we take the necessary steps to to engage? the lending institutions to get better participation so that we can address the foreclosure crisis. Any questions? Councilmember Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in the motion, it speaks to looking at consumer fraud complaints. Um, and I have uh, become familiar with my constituents who find themselves unaware of the rules of how the banks are approaching them. And I'll give you a scenario. Uh, one family was fighting to keep their home. And the bank's reps kept coming back and saying, you have to pay up. Let's take care of the, the balance. If not, we have to get you out of this house and sell it, put it on the market. Real estate agents come forward and start offering uh, different prices for the house. I was way below what, what was valued. Uh, they're fighting to keep their home. And then you have a building and safety person show up and start inspecting the house, start citing them for different uh, issues in the home that uh, were never sought out before, but now they have this kind of aggressive action by building and safety officials who are putting them now in a whole different place. Because now they have to comply, they don't have the money to comply. Now there's more pressure from the agents, more pressure from the banks to let go of the house. So the timing is very uh, coincidental. For some, others it might be viewed as who's talking to whom? And are we targeting communities for getting quick sales, quick turnarounds? Um, so have you heard of cases like that? I mean, it's not just once I've heard this. Uh, we, anecdotally, we hear stories of, of uh, constituents uh, not understanding the rules uh, or knowing how to work with the banks and then coincidentally having uh, their homes being inspected through complaints. Now, keep in mind, single-family homes, the only inspections that would ever occur would be through a, a complaint basis. So there's no periodic inspection uh, conducted by building and safety, so that would be purely incidental or someone would be calling. But as far as... You know, but, to but the that, larger perspective on, on holistic but that, but, approach and coordination, there's... But that lends to the question, yeah. how does the building and safety inspect show up if it has to be complaint-driven? Correct. Is it conceivable that the folks who want to buy these homes are actually complaining to the city to create this kind of environment for the person who's already in a very tough position? Is that possible? Can we determine who's calling as far as complaints? Are they anonymous? Do we have a record? Do you happen to know? I know you don't no, work for building and safety. We'd have to bring a building safety representative here, but it would be speculation on my part to answer that question. I think we need to look into that because it just seems to be coincidental. If it is, it is. But if there are other maneuvers going on here, we should be aware of them. We should be protecting our constituents. Certainly. Especially if you have a city personnel involved. Certainly. But um, that's something I, I'll, I'll look into to building and safety. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, no more questions from the members, and we already had opened up public comment and closed public comment. I'd just like to add that uh, included in the report from the ha L.A. Housing Department, if they would please uh, describe in the report the President's new proposal related to foreclosures and lower interest rates. Certainly. Okay. It's best that we the information we have at that time. Certainly. Okay. And so, therefore... Okay. Mr. Chair, one, one last request in the report back. Mm -hmm. uh, if we could have the Housing Department um, uh, give us case examples of how the Housing Department is working with uh, these organizations that are trying to help folks in their situation as, as far as foreclosures go. Do we have any case examples of how we're working with our constituents? Okay. Um, that's an elaboration that I think we need to hear in terms of what's happening where the Rubber beats the road, so to speak. So, thank you. Therefore, what's before us is uh, we move to adopt the, the motion and with the report back as requested. Okay. That's adopted. Um, question to Michael Keck. Yes. Um, is 
something occurred a long time ago on this date people in this room might not be aware of? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. All right. How about... How about the birth of a, a, a wonderful young man who became a star? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, 30 years ago today I was born. Happy Great. Birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. Thank you. Wow. You didn't have to give the age, but oh, <laughs> I, guess when, I guess when you're 30, you still say what your age is. <laughs> I never give my age anymore. Certain well. decades. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. That's youth, giving his age. All right. All right. So with that, that concludes the items as agendized for today's agenda. We do have general public comment, which will now be open, and we have several general public comment cards. Each person will bring, be brought up for two minutes to give their comments. And also, always remember that you can submit, you can submit any written statements to this committee, and they will be uh, held for the record. So the first one is Jeff Bailey. And you can come up. You don't have to come up one at a time, but please come up, Jeff. Also with Beth Mueller can come up as well. And also Martha Siata. Hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, general public comment. So we've already taken action on all the items we can take action on. Um, on general public comment, please don't uh, consider it rude if we don't dialogue back with you, because if it's not agendized on the agenda, we cannot deliberate as a body on the matter, but we will take in your information. Yes. State your name for the record. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jeff Bailey. I'm the Director of Client Services at AIDS Project Los Angeles. Cool. Um, I'm here today just to express our concerns about the recent Housing Authority's um, execution of the HOPLA grant process. Recent HOPLA grants concluded or terminated on Friday, September 30th. Agencies were not notified of new funding awards till very late the same afternoon that new con uh, the contracts ended. New contracts were supposed to commence on October the 1st. Um, however, everyone received a letter with a funding award with no direction on what components of the uh, funding uh, programs that the Housing Authority wanted to fund. So at this time, there's incredible instability for some of our most fragile clients living with HIV. There are no funding awards available. There are no short-term assistant grants available. There are no permanent housing grants available for individuals who have found an apartment to move into. APLA, and this is, you know, not about APLA, but the system in general, our budget was cut 47 percent. We had to transition three case managers. There has been no direction from the Housing Authority of the HOPA office about other agencies that have been funded in order for us to provide referrals. So there's significant instability in the housing system for individuals living with HIV at this point. So we would really um, respectfully request that you look into this process, look into the execution of these contracts. Uh, we would like to know and see a matrix of providers that were funded so we can determine where to send our clients. We have about 120 clients that are in limbo at the present time. Um, and we're, as you probably know, the largest aid service organization in LA, in which we provide housing services to about 1,000 clients each year. Um, so we're just concerned about the uh, process. Thank you. Thank you very much for apprising us of that. Beth? Good morning, council members. If you're here on the same issue, would you stand? Gensler Architects has been hired to design the new Farmers Field football stadium the one that is to receive no public funds, according to the mayor. Gensler will be taking 250 jobs out of Santa Monica and moving their offices to L.A. The city is giving $1 million of the Community Development Block Grant money from the 37th year consolidated plan to Gensler. This is housing and urban development money meant to help alleviate poverty and homelessness in a variety of ways, including through HOPWA. In his letter to the City Council dated December 30, 2010, Mayor Villaraigosa wrote, quote, effective management of our limited funds made available through the consolidated plan are critical to ensuring our city addresses the immediate needs of our most impoverished communities, unquote. Gensler Architect Firm does not represent an impoverished community. They are a multi-million dollar business. Many programs that were vital to the communities they served had their funding reduced or cut completely. Gifting $1 million to Gensler Architects is not effective management of our limited funds. We have asked Councilwoman Jan Perry to help facilitate the return of the million dollars. She did not respond. 
We are here today to make that same request of the Housing, Community, and Economic Development Committee. Facilitate the return of the money. We realize that this is not business as usual, but it is the business of good stewardship with reduced resources. It is the business of a directly, directly addressing our most impoverished communities. It is the business of democracy. It is the business of restorative justice. We are watching carefully. We are shining a light on what is being done in the dark. We have made it our business to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you said the 37th year, correct? Last year, yes. Last year's mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Martha? Martha. Um, hi, I'm here to address the same issue as Beth, um, but mine is more of kind of a, um, an emotional plea. I don't have anything planned. I went down to Skid Row for the first time yesterday, and I think until you go down there and see people, actual human beings living there, you can't understand what it's like. Um, there were two gentlemen that we passed on the sidewalk, and they didn't even ask us for money, and I asked them if they needed some, and they very gratefully accepted some. And to look into their eyes was quite an experience. I went to Rite Aid later, and there was a fellow there, and he told me about some program that he was going through to get documentation to work in a hospital, and he was so proud of himself. And when I gave him a little bit of money, he like jumped up and down like a child. These are our most vulnerable people in the community. We call ourselves a Christian nation, and yet we are allowing the most vulnerable people, the most impoverished people, to live in ways that we would never allow ourselves to live, and actually which many people are just a paycheck away from anyway. I'm just asking to please do what she's doing. I gave one man five dollars. But it's not $5 to him. It's like $100 to him. Because what he can do with that money is so much more than what I can do to put that money. And so I just ask people, when you get down on your knees and pray, just ask God who needs to be helped the most. And it's these people down here who are not so different from you and I. And thank you very much for the opportunity to be allowed to say this. Thank you. Next, we have Clinton and uh, C.R. Legal S.R. Go ahead. Yes, my name is Clinton Carter. I'm also uh, a resident on the Skid Row. I can understand y'all uh, trying to take money out of Skid Row to better Skid Row. But to take a million dollars out when you when you can use that money to get rid of Skid Row, it's easy to go down there and give out money, free money, you know, food and all that. But the policy is y'all got all these buildings down there that you can take that million dollars in and put into the building to get the people off the Skid Row. So all I'm saying is give back the money, you know, and use it the correct way to Skid Row because we do need it. And it's enough fund, I mean, enough uh, program down there that y'all can get that money too, but the people down there don't know about how to come up here and get the pro money for, for the program. And Beth is doing a good job, but she needs somebody on the city council to help her. You know, if y'all want to get rid of Skid Row, come down there and see the policies that we do have. And, you know, give back, you know, to me, you know, okay, you taking this million, and gonna go re renovate a building that ain't got nothing to do with Skid Row. Ain't got nothing to do with the people that are living on the street. I looked out here today and see all these tents out here. In two to three weeks, them tents will be gone. Skid Row is still there. I, I'm, I only been in the town four years. And I work and I walk through Skid Row seven days a week. I go to church down on Skid Row. Give it back, give the money back. Or put the money aside to you know, don't just give it up. Because the building that y'all giving this money to can get the funding from somewhere else. And I'd like to thank y'all for letting me talk. Thank you, Clinton. I do a better job in church talking, but when I'm right here, I can Amen. Talk. Where are you from? Yeah, sure. Where are you from? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And 
down there. We don't have this down down south. Down south. Thank you. Um, uh, C R Legal S R, right? That's correct. It's okay. C R Legal Senior. A <coughs> oh, senior. Okay. And chair, members of the council, and the audience, and those who are watching on television land, I thank you for the privilege of coming before you to speak. That's a, an opportunity to share the heart of the people, because now I feel the heartbeat of the people. I am one of them. I was one of you before, now I'm one of them. And I say one of you, meaning that I had wealth and money. And I didn't really feel the pain of those who were less fortunate, because we have a tendency not to feel unless we have that situation happen to us. They call that empathy. So I'm telling you that you need to be responsible and do the right thing. And we're making a demand on you because we realize that in your world and that I was in, we operate on the survival of the fittest. And we have greed at the bottom of our character. And it's human nature. It's human to be what you are. But it's also human for us to demand that you give us what's entitled to us. And we're not going to ask for it and beg for it. We're going to demand it. And you will understand what demand means in the legal format. And one of the reasons that we're asking is that the people need the resources. And you don't know what's happening to this country. They're destroying the very fabulous country by destroying the fundamental unit of our society, which is the homeowners. And you're making people homeless. My home was seized illegally without court papers and made me homeless overnight because of greed. And what the director of that organization that spoke before you was talking about, there's a conspiracy, criminal conspiracy enterprise. And one of the tools that is utilized to stop it is RICO. And you can get your attorneys to solve some of those problems. But in summary and in, in closing, we want the money and we want it now. And we're not waiting. Thank you. Okay. That concludes the general public comment. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so with that, uh, the matters before this committee have now been taken care of. So this committee is now adjourned.